Hi, I'm Rod White, and for this segment today, we're gonna to talk a lot about shooting uphill and downhill, how that's gonna affect where your arrow impacts at, the understanding of how a laser rangefinder with an angle compensator works, and the form flaws that we have typically whenever we're shooting up and down hills that we need to take into consideration as a bow hunter. As whitetail hunters, we often don't think a lot about angles. Western hunters use them almost daily when they're hunting in the mountains. And we can apply some of those techniques to whitetail hunting because when we're in a tree stand shooting off a platform, the angles that we're shooting at at times are much greater than even a lot of Western hunters will experience. You need to understand where your arrow impacts with your particular setup because everybody's a little bit different. There are a lot of factors that come into play. Your peep height, your arrow speed, the weight of your arrow, those are all factors that are gonna determine how far off you may have to aim given a distance, whether you compensate by giving yourself three yards or six yards or greater, and then factoring in how much an animal drops like a whitetail when it reacts to the shot. If you combine all those things, a target like we're about to shoot now at 35 yards at a 35 degree angle may not seem like a super steep shot with a, a lot of consequences of having the wrong number, but if you shoot this target for the actual distance from here to the target by using a rangefinder that doesn't have an angle compensator, you're gonna hit significantly higher. In my situation with my setup, at 35 yards, a 35 degree angle, I'm gonna hit about three inches higher if I don't have the angle compensation built into my shot. The one thing an angle compensator will tell you is the yardage that you actually need to shoot the target for. In this case, I'm shooting a 35 yard target downhill at a 35 degree angle. That rangefinder will compensate and tell me approximately what I need to shoot that yardage for. It won't be 35, it's actually closer to 33, 32 and a half yards with my particular setup. Factor in a whitetail typically jumps the string or drops at the sound of a shot. That reaction combined with the three inches could leave you up to 15 inches off of where you intend to place the arrow. So make sure that while you're practicing that you're including shooting uphill and downhill so that you understand where your arrow is gonna impact in relation to what your rangefinder actually tells you. When you buy a rangefinder that has an angle compensator in it, it generally comes with two different modes. One is called line of sight, and the other is called horizontal distance. Horizontal distance is a distance as if that animal that you're shooting at that target you're shooting is directly across from you at the same elevation. However, when we're hunting out of a tree stand for whitetails or when you're hunting in the mountains and shooting at steep angles, the distance from line of sight from you to that animal will be significantly more than what it is from a level perspective, meaning from the base of your tree to the target may only be 20 yards, but depending on your degree of angle, your line of sight might be at a distance of 35 yards or more. So you have to shoot the target for the horizontal distance rather than the line of sight distance. In this example, we're shooting at a target that's 35 yards away and it's a 35 degree angle. So that arrow I just shot there, I shot with a distance in line of sight mode, which in this case is about 37 yards. But when I shoot it at 35 yards with a 35 degree angle, I'm gonna shoot it for a different distance, which is actually 35 yards. So as you can see, the difference between line of sight mode and horizontal distance to the target is drastically different. At 35 degrees, at 35 yards, it's about three inches with my setup, maybe a little bit more. As you can see, understanding the difference between line of sight and angle compensation, which is horizontal distance, can make all the difference on whether you make a clean, ethical shot on an animal or whether you miss it completely. When choosing a rangefinder, there are a few things to consider. One, make certain that it has an angle compensator on it. If not, you're gonna to have to learn how to do the math to know how much you're gonna to have to aim off in order to impact where you want to impact. At ASA archery tournaments or NFA archery tournaments where we're shooting field, we're allowed to use rangefinders. And when we use those rangefinders, there is an inconsistency between different rangefinding models and sometimes even within the same model. So when I'm shooting with another pro, we may be using the same model rangefinder and he may read or she may read two yards different than what my rangefinder reads. It doesn't mean that the rangefinder is wrong, it just means that there's a little bit of an inconsistency in how it was calibrated. So keep that in mind whenever you're out shooting in the field, if you're shooting with a buddy's rangefinder, that distance that it's reading, say it's 25 yards, with your rangefinder it may say 25 yards, but with your buddies it may say 27. If you base your shot process or your aiming off of that, you could be off as much as two or three yards from one rangefinder to the next. So make sure that when you're hunting and when you're shooting in competition, either one, they're using the same rangefinder that you use to sight in with. It's equally, if not more important, that you understand when you're shooting downhill or when you're shooting uphill, that there are inherent form flaws that we generally come up with. And it's just a natural tendency. 
The two most common errors that I see when people are shooting down or shooting uphill in regards to their form is that generally when people draw their bow aiming down or when they draw their bow aiming up, their shoulder is not in the same consistent position as what it is when they shoot on level ground. That means your draw length is gonna feel a lot different and you're not gonna aim as well. Your arrow impact more than likely is not gonna be in the same place. The other really common error that I see when people are shooting downhill or from a tree stand or uphill is that they're not bending at the waist. When you bend at the waist, it helps keep that shoulder in position and helps keep your draw line consistent. To demonstrate what I mean about shoulder position, I'm gonna show you where I see that common error at and what it looks like. An incorrect shoulder position when you're shooting downhill looks a lot like this. The left shoulder is positioned really, really high. The correct way to shoot downhill is to tilt at your hips and aim downwards before you begin to draw. That'll help keep your shoulder position low. The best way to understand whether you're doing this correctly or incorrectly is to have a buddy take a picture of you at full draw and draw a line from your wrist through your elbow on your bow arm all the way back through your rear drawing elbow. That line, if it's crooked, represents obviously bad form. If it's a straight line, it represents good form. One of the most recent advancements in optics has been the invention of laser rangefinders in the past 10 to 15 years with angle compensators built into them. Now Vortex has taken that to a whole nother level where they've put the angle compensator inside the binocular. Not that that's new to our industry, but the technology that Vortex put into their binoculars is way far and above what I've seen in other rangefinding binoculars. It's very accurate and the line of sight distance versus the horizontal distance and how it calculates the distance to the target for you on severe angles is much more accurate than any other optics I've seen. Regardless of whether you're using a handheld rangefinder or using binoculars that have a rangefinder built into them with the angle compensation, make sure that when you sight in your bow, you're using the same binoculars or the same rangefinder on the practice field where you're getting your sight marks as when you're up in the tree stand hunting or when you're on the mountainside hunting.